Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici, I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video we are covering CCNA semester 2, Routing and Switching Essentials. This is chapter 6, Static Routing. Here in section 6.5, troubleshooting static and default route issues. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain how router process packets when a static route is configured, troubleshoot common static and default route configuration issues. The, why the network will fail? Due to failed interface, a service provider drops a connection, link becomes oversaturated, an administrator ends a wrong configuration. But these are the common iOS troubleshooting commands. Very, very common. This is like a, a, the tools of the trade. Like a, a builder will have a hammer. For us as a technician, we have a ping, trace route, then show commands. Ping, uh, what will ping do? Ping will show you is there if there is a communication between the source and destination. If the destination is ready there to hear the source. So echo and then we want echo reply. We have extended ping where we can actually see the packet a path if, if we want to use that. You can see the path to the packet to take him to the destination and returning path as well, which is very it's a great command. Trace route, we will show you the path the packet takes from the source to destination only. Then we have a show IP route, which will tell us what is, our, what is in our routing table. So if you can't go to the destination, if for example, it cannot ping or something, the first command will be, uh, well, after you check the interfaces are working, show IP interface brief, make sure they, layer one and layer two is up, you go on IP address, as well as you can see show IP route. Is there a destination IP network is on the, on the route, in the routing table. And then another command that we, is very useful command, show CDP neighbor detail. This is a very useful command. Okay, extended ping. With extended ping, for example, we can do ping 192.168.2.1 and we can tell the source where we're pinging it from. Because by default, you're gonna ping from the closest. So this is the interface you're gonna ping it from. This is the default, is the closest. Well, if this is the static route that points that way. If the static route points this way, it's gonna ping, for, it's gonna always try and ping from the source, from the closest. You can tell what what is the source, so you can change the source. So instead of pinging from the closest, from this interface, you are pinging it from this IP address, or from you can even say the gigabit zero zero as a source. And on this case, we have five exclamation marks, which means there is a communication. Everything is working as it should. Trace route will tell you the path the packet takes to get to the destination. So it will show us, okay, well, we reached 172.16.2.2, so we, the, our packet, it's gone from here, and it's gone here, it reached this, and we display it. So with the trace route, what the router will do, it will send like pings, but the time TTL value is going to be one. So for example, it sends a trace route once and return. Okay, that's going to display here. Then it will increase the TTL value to two and it will send another trace route and it will go one, reduce one TTL and go to the next TTL, next uh, hop and that, ho that router will return the traffic and say, okay, got it. So you will see it. And then it, like that, it will find it, the path to the destination by increasing the TTL value. Show IP route. So for example, we do this on the router one. So a router one here, the destination network we are concerned with is this network 192.168.2.0 is it on in our routing table well yes it's here 192.168.2.0 forward slash 24 and it's a static route administrative distance of one uh, yeah this one here cool so let me let me write that down here so again I don't know why it's gone okay now the router once once you get a destination packet with the destination 192.168.2.0, say a destination packet is 192.168.2.100 is this PC3, the router is going to go through the routing table and try to find the match. The longest match always win. Once you found the match, okay, there is a routing table. I got a static route for that destination, and I found that okay, well for me to get to that destination, I have to go to the next hop address 192.162.2. Okay, now I need to find out, do another lookup. This is called a recursive lookup, how to get to that destination. So I go through my routing table again and find out, oh, okay, well, to get that to that destination is directly connected with me and I have to use serial zero zero interface to get there. So I have to use this interface and it will send it. 
to verify interface status, show IP interface brief. This is a great command. You can see what interfaces are there on the router and which interface is going to IP address, what interfaces have uh, is layer one is up, is if it's up or not, layer two, if it's up or down. Uh, status, this status tells you layer one. By default, all the interfaces on the router is going to be administratively down, which means they are shut down. So you need to do no shutdown to bring the interface up. Um, it won't, sometimes it will be down as well. So after you do no shutdown, it will not be administratively down. It will just say like this, it will just say down. Then you have to check the cabling. You have to, con you have to troubleshoot layer one. If it says down here on the protocol, that's the layer two information. Well, you have to troubleshoot that clock rate. Maybe, maybe the encapsulation is wrong and so on. Directly connected devices, show CDP neighbor. This is a really good command here. You will see what are, what are your directly connected neighbors. So even if layer three is not working, you can't ping the, the, the neighbor for some reason. Now you can check show CDP neighbor. That's going to show you if you have any neighbors or if it's layer one and two are working. So now, for example, if even if router one cannot ping router two, so there's no pings that are happening. When you run show CDP neighbor, it appears here. So you, that confirms to you that layer one and layer two are working. There's something to do with the layer three that is not working. Here, for example, we do troubleshoot example one. For example, uh, we ping in 192.168.2.1. So we ping in uh, this address, the address of router three or the internal gigabit zero zero inter in address. And the source will be using our internal address. So when we do the pinging, we see five dots. That means that we have uh, not successful five of the packets have been dropped. So success rate is 0%. Okay, so the next thing we can do is go through the trace route 192.168.2.1. And do we see anything? Okay, so now we see that, okay, the first packet we sent was towards the router 2, 172.16.22. That was, we sent it there. The next one we see 172.16.21, which is our packet. So router 2 has just returned to us. And then we send it back to router 2. And router 2 has sent it back to us. And again, so here we can see that there's a loop because we send it to router 2 and router 2 is sending it to us. So that's a routing loop. So we got the router 2 and we do show IP root and have a look at what's happening in there. So when we see the destination network, for example, 192.168.2.0, we have to look at the in the routing table. And yes, there, there is a destination static route 192.168.2.0 via 172.16.2.1. Mm. So router 2 thinks that, okay, well, to get to that destination, I need to send the packets towards the router 1 here. Now, that's not good. Because router one thinks, okay, well, to get to that destination, I need to send it to router two. That's why we have a routing loop. So, show running config. We can see on the router two, there's a two uh, static routes configured: 172.16.3.0, 172.16.3.0, which is this network with this mask, and next hop address 172.16.2.1, which is IP address of this interface here. And that's correct. But as well as 192.168.2.0, this is this network, and to get to that network again, I have to send it to router one, same IP, same next hop address, and that's a, that's the error. So okay, we have to go to the global configuration mode and remove that. So no IP root 192.168.2.0 with that southern mask and that next hop address, and we configure it with the correct uh, next hop address, which is 192.168.1.1 which is the interface of the next hop of router 3. So now when we do ping 192.168, same as what we did before, from the source G00, we have a success rate. Thank you very much for watching this section, 6.5, troubleshooting static and default root issues. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Azir Krasnici and bye-bye.